So it's 44 and a half, but we're assuming um, those stones. Ooh, there were some if, opportunities. Yeah, if we assume those stones didn't die, that's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 21, 22. So it's a 22 point loss. So that's only 22 points difference. And as you can see, one mistake is 20 points at this level. Yeah. So this is a very even game. Yeah. How did you how did you score that? Uh, again, can you repeat that count? Uh each stone, each dead stone is two points because it's one point of territory and then one point stone reduction of your opponent's points. Okay. So, so each stone is two points. And then white was the what the three white stones were dead. And then of course yeah. K twelve is white's points, and then um Well wasn't it only yeah. the two wasn't it only two white stones that were dead? Only L eleven and L twelve? Uh, technically, yeah. Let me two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Uh, that's I mean, I'm being nitpicky. But... <laughs> I just want to make sure I'm counting okay, it correctly so too. Assuming Black fixes at K thirteen to fix the cut. Oh yeah, it's still twenty points because the two, yeah. the two points right there, L thirteen and K twelve. So it's twenty points, not twenty two. Wow. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't Either look way. like it, it doesn't look like it would be that big of a mistake, right? But yeah. Yeah, well, like I said, one mistake at this level is about, it can be 20 to 30, yeah. or even 50 points, because last game was a 50 point group, right? Or 40 point group. So I can tell you from what I saw this game, it was a very even game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was a very close game. It could have gone both ways several times. Yeah, it felt like I got this like initiative in the middle game where I was just like charging through the center. And I, I don't know if that was that I was just playing better in the middle game or if it was that like w the groundwork that I had laid in the opening just made it so that I was going to be able to play advantageously yeah, the groundwork. The groundwork was actually pretty even. Okay. The, the difference was actually how a cash built the center. You were at a disadvantage. A cash had a little bit more than you. Oh, okay. But the way a cash built the center was just slightly. Well, thank you for the follow interrupting out. <laughs> ironic name and thank you for the follow interrupting out <laughs> uh, but the way he built the center was just a too a slightly too loose and then you made it uh, you took control of the center and that's and black wasn't able to build the center and that's why mm -hmm. the game was lost but it's very minor right, mm. All right so let's go ahead from the start doo -doo -doo. okay so just a good rule of thumb don't play a three four cross because oh hmm. remember how i said stopping the shamari is good mm -hmm. well if you have it this way when black stops the shamari he actually has support oh okay whereas if you play a let's say a star point or whatever and they do his opening what something up here or whatever and you play three four now when he approaches there's not support Interesting. So we kind of call that losing. We we kind of call that losing on the second move. Technically, the example for that is here, oh. because when we take open corners, cat, get out of the way. You can approach with support, right? We kind of call that losing on the second move, not because it loses, but because it's bad fighting spirit. Yeah. Uh, okay. In a sense, it lets your opponent approach too easily. It's too passive. Uh, so the argument is we don't give that to our opponent. And if you play a three four cross, either this one or this one. It's going to be the same thing, as long as you play an open corner first. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I was going to get to it. Yeah, I was just playing three fours no matter what. I didn't even think about that. And then I've found that as white, I like playing diagonally across so that yeah, so that I to know I'm going to I'm going to get two side or two corners that are adjacent. Like if I play in the lower right, then he could play in yeah. the lower left, and I don't I don't, I don't want that. Like you mm -hmm. know. That yeah, cross but that's shape. also why it's very common to see white play a star point cross. That's yeah. your reasoning exactly, but combined with my reasoning, that's why the normal, right. what you normally see online, um, is like a, a star cross, basically okay. a star point cross for that's from good white. To know. It's because mm -hmm. black has the initiative. Black usually gets to pick his opening. White usually is more reactive. It's annoying, right. but white has Komi. So, uh, this was actually a very nice exchange for black. Because Black's like, okay, force you to make Shamari, and then I get my Shamari plus my extension. Really awesome shape for Black. Uh, White played the open side, very nice. Uh, Black forgot to do a Seki. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> Forgot. <laughs> but why jump back in beta base? Okay, that's good. And then you jump. Okay, very nice. Uh, white played it up at side. Very nice. Black jump back. And here you can go fourth line. Because remember, if you have third line on both sides, you want fourth line. Okay. To develop. So this is a little bit flat, but it, you guys are still learning, so it's perfectly fine. Uh, this one I thought was your first really slow move. Because... Mm. This is this is only three space distance. It's not the most open. Should I play like H sixteen or something like that? Um, I would say you could come down here or maybe make a two space another two space up here. I think both of those would be fine. Okay. Uh, I would play at the fourth off the fourth line, not the third line, because fourth line is the one that's easier to invade. Because if I surround, I can slide. Whereas if you play next to the other three three, there's no slide. Hmm. Right, because that's a touching move. Yeah. So it's a little bit easier to play off a four, the fourth line than the third line when you're extending along the side, but minor things. Um, either way, I think there's still two open things that you could have done rather than this. Sure. Uh, but uh, after after we close here, now I think you guys got a little bit confused. <laughs> this seems so, analogous to like in chess like okay all my pieces are out i'm castled now what the hell do i do <laughs> right so you guys are kind of splitting the board pretty evenly it's very yeah. even board uh you could have been a little bit faster but that's semantics right um so at this point you're supposed to develop so let's draw a line from the corner of blacks to the corner of whites when it's kind of traded like this where it's dead even whoever develops first is going to have a lead so for Makes black, sense. you want to jump like here or here, play on that line to bring yours up closer to the center and push whites down. Hmm. So you play on the line of both influences. So the easiest shapes is this one. I think uh, this one's a little bit more active, if you can remember it. Um, shoulder hits are also really good for developing, but that's a little bit higher tactics. If you're unsure, just remember what I said, capping and one-point jumps are really easy to build to the center. Okay. Those are the, those are like your starting shapes. Uh, so white starts building a little bit for uh, a little bit more first, and then black goes in. So you really love playing right past the line. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, this is an invasion if you're not playing on the line. Okay. Like you can literally play here, and that's on the line, reduce it. But as soon as you go past the line, you change tactical mindsets. Uh, as yeah. Soon as you play past the line, it's an invasion. You need to live. I think my thought process was like I was thinking I think I was thinking about playing along the line but for some reason I was only thinking about like the absolute center of the board and I thought okay I shouldn't go for the center this quickly. Yeah. Um <laughs> if you're reducing it's fine. Uh on this board the center happens to be the line but usually you're looking for that line. And if you mm. can build if you can play on the line and build while you're developing you can see that actually playing on the line is good for you i'm reducing his territory you're reducing while developing it's very yes, powerful okay. mm -hmm. so usually your opponent will try to fight or something and maybe destroy both like maybe you go and then white like, will forget you i'm gonna go too and then you kind of trade moyos or something you never know the crazy crap can happen um but if you want to invade if you're if you like to invade because you seem to like to invade <laughs> um try to be on the third line and if you want to go a little bit more powerful if you don't have a lot of space like assuming if you have space on the third line go for the third line and get your space right because maybe you might start making eyes but let's assume you don't have space the other option to consider is some attachments on the third line hmm. just play the attachments where the widest distance is like that's the oh. easiest way for you to live gotcha but that's really complicated and you might die very easily. So, mm -hmm. but if you're confident you can outread like Smith right here, then that's an option. But those are the two invasion options for you is to just play on the third line where there's some space and try to jump and make some space and run away or play an attachment and make a stupid complicated fight. Okay. Like, it can go both ways, honestly. So it's like a touch is kind of like flipping a coin right now until you figure out how to read how reading works okay but it's an option i recommend if all things are even reduce it's simpler easier and reduce while developing is just 
an easier to use tactic. But if your opponent has more and reducing is not enough, then you need to know how to invade, which is okay. another tactic. But this one just feels like a little good for whites because now you have no eye space, you're cut off, and whites in control of the board. Sure, so okay, that makes sense to me. Yeah, you run away. But remember, knight's moves are used for attacking, not for running. One-point jumps are used for running. Like here mm. or here. Uh, because knight's moves have cutting points. So you can't you don't really have time to cut if you're defending so you can't really just go cut white because you're you have the weak group so white can attack with a knight's move so knight's move is good for attacking but for okay. defense you really want to try to think about one point jumps rather than the knight's moves gotcha so when you're running away always be checking your connections and when you're attacking look at your opponent's connections maybe mm -hmm. there's a chance um yeah, this is fine. You technically can cut here. Hmm. But uh, I w I'm going to say just do it. At the higher levels, you don't want to do this because you can sacrifice. But I don't know if this level will know that or not. I think it's better just to learn how cuts work first. And then at higher levels, don't cut cuts that they can just sacrifice. Yeah, I mean, that's the cut that I wanted Like after he played H5. And, and when I played H6, like I was hoping I... And, and played K four. I was hoping, like, if he hadn't played K five, I was gonna go for that cut. Yeah. Um, Peeping, like, this is a peep, which means you threaten to cut. Those mm -hmm. are usually more powerful than cutting directly. So oh, it's okay. a very high level concept, and so it's like it's hard to say, like, what do I want you to do at this level? Mm -hmm. Do I want you to play cuts and just learn how they work, or do I want you to just start with good habits and peep cuts until you uh, to get profit before? You just start cutting directly and just losing. I don't know. Like, it's really hard because I mm -hmm. know cutting directly is bad, but at the same time, you need to be able to read the cuts. So yeah. It's, and it's even like, like 22. Yeah. And even like once he connected all this, it felt like I saw it an opportunity to maybe like surround and kill him, but he got two eyes in the end. Um, so a good rule of thumb is never expect to kill. Mm -hmm. You're mm. supposed to surround because once you both get good at life and death killing is really hard yeah and as you saw this game he actually lived mm -hmm. killing is hard so i would say just surround and force him to live right and just keep your side territory while he's living and then as long as you can do that you've successfully destroyed a lot of the center mm -hmm. and you kept all your side so and all he got was four points for it yeah so this will make so this will give you thickness that will potentially support an invasion for you or a reduction or whatever. That thickness will give a lot of possibilities for you. So your value is positive. So you're, you're getting positive value and positive exchange rates, even if you live small. Yeah. So the trick is surround and just keep your points and your profit will come naturally. Okay. Uh, but and it kind of played out that way it. anyway, right? Because I... I mean, I sort of use these like F7, H7, J or K7 stones, like, and the M7 stone. Like, those yeah. all kind of helped me later in the game when I was, you know, doing my march through the center. Correct. That's exactly correct. Um, but yeah, like, saying that you're going to kill it from here, even I don't know that question. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. like, I can't say that group's going to die. Yeah. So be very wary of saying that you're going to kill something because attacking for profit and attacking to kill are two very different tactics mm -hmm. and very different shapes to use on those tactics. Right. So it's very important to make that distinction. Right now you're just surrounding and getting influence for free. Mm -hmm. That's all you're doing. Uh, so you do ice space. Um, I don't really like a Hane here. Well, ah, no, no, no. That's too much. That's too much. Right, just play normal. <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> I was going to say, like, I don't like a Hane because it's Gote. You should play this. It's Sente. This. It's Sente. And then maybe there's, maybe there's Wedges or you can just Tanuki. I mean, that's way too much. <laughs> way too much. <laughs> yeah, that might, be, that might be above my pay grade. <laughs> <laughs> you, you reduce the ice space. That's fine. That's fine. Um, Plossy, can I ask you? Um, I wasn't sure about H3. I mean, I'm just kind of getting paranoid about cuts nowadays. But, like, for it's it felt, I don't know, it just felt weird to me. Uh, it's fine because when you Atari from this side, yeah. he just go he just runs into a wall. And if you Atari from this side, he runs into a wall. So I don't need to play H three. 
correct. You should expand okay. your eye space more. That's um, what I felt. I just yeah, I didn't I didn't read it properly. And then I think you're live as it stands. The only shape that I'm worried about is if he plays here and sacrifices it to squeeze these two stones. But mm. there's a snapback to kill him and there's an eye right here. So yeah. If you are if you were <laughs> like very likely you won't see that. So very, I would expect you to play right here. And that would be fine. I think that's your level. That's a good move. This would be like perfect life for your level. Mm -hmm. uh, but technically, if you just play one for two, it's alive as it stands. You get Tanuki, which means white actually made a mistake with this Hane right here, which is what I was trying to get at. But I was like, wait, 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 too much, too much, too much. <laughs> yeah. uh, because mm -hmm. you're not supposed to lose Sente when you attack. Because if mm -hmm. you just reduce like this, reduce like this, and he lives, and then go back and like reduce over here or something, you're, you totally, you're totally winning this game. Yeah, but this is a little above this level. It's a, it's a bit actually it's it's quite a bit above this level, but just know that these tactics will come up at higher levels. But for now, you guys played really well. Uh, this I, this shape um, I didn't like so much. Uh, it's fine for this game. This was your level now, but I want you to remember that this bent four shape. Remember four. There are two eyes with four. Mm. So, assuming no squeeze plays. If white plays here, you play here. And if white plays here, you play here. So I'm going to create the two eyes if he forces the matter anyways. Right. So four is usually for a line of four, not a box four, but a line of four is usually two eyes. Okay. So when you see four, that is your hint for maybe you're already alive. Uh, but you should still read it out and check if your opponent plays the four, any forcing moves. Make sure you have two eyes. Even make sure you have a response to each forcing move. Um, the only things to be wary of, like for I think these are easy enough to read out, so definitely check these plays of Vita Point. But the only other things to be wary of is these diagonal forcing moves. Make sure there's no like Ataris or Liberty problems. But other than that, you should be good. Right. Yeah. That though H uh, G three was another one of those moves where I was like, ah, I feel like this isn't the best move, but I just wanted to play it safe. Yeah. This I think will come with go problems. Yeah. Like this one, you're gonna, you're just gonna need to do more go problems to see that, mm -hmm. because it's kind of the difference of you having Sente or not having Sente here. So it's like a ten point difference, at least, mm -hmm. maybe twenty point difference at this stage. Um, wow. So, but like I said, like everyone can improve life and death, right? So if you can, if you knew life and death, yeah, you'd probably be two, three ranks stronger than you are now. Uh, so it's definitely a skill worth worth learning but you're also learning a lot of other tactics at the moment so just one thing at a time just just know you need it uh this is i think the most important concept this game for black because black had a lot more control than white um white kept losing sente with these attacks because he's already alive you shouldn't be still surrounding you should be playing a big move like, oh okay at this point i wasn't thinking about whether he's alive or not i really just didn't want him to like get into my corner inside and start eating up points but yeah but, but this is a center not yeah a side. the side's already blocked yeah so all you're blocking is like a few points yeah yeah it makes sense so mm. technically this moves really slow mm -hmm. um and so it gave black the, his uh <laughs> chance yeah and but, i was gonna play oh or yeah, I, I was gonna play P eleven if I hadn't done that. So. This is a this is like the theme of this game is <laughs> Black keeps playing behind the line. If Black just reduces and maybe forces his opponent to respond or whatever, I think Black can win this game. If Black plays a successful reduction and White doesn't counter invade or something, you have a really strong chance to win the game. And I think this is where you keep messing up is you're you're not seeing that line properly. Yeah. I think what you'll start to see also, and maybe this is already translating into my Go game, um, I, I I like to play chess kind of risque. So I, I guess maybe that's what's happening here, but like I'm not... Play this move. If you're going to invade, go to the third line somewhere. Here or here. <laughs> like if there's not a less... If, if you're going to invade and you want to try that style and learn that stuff, that's fine. I don't recommend it, if all things are even, I think it's easier to reduce. But if that's a style that you want to pursue and learn to try, you can, but it's high risk, high reward. It's very dangerous. Sure. But the easier time you'll have 
is on the third line where you have one space jumps. And if you don't have jumps, then you have, you try attachments. Hmm. But my advice is that you reduce unless you have to invade because invasions are very high risk, high reward. So it's extremely dangerous. But if you want to try it, that is an option for you to try. I gotcha. I think it's better than this. Like this or this idea, I think is better than this idea. Because this one, when you get cut off and surrounded, you have no follow-ups. You don't really have any follow-ups, really. Because where are you going to make the eyes? Making the eyes in the center is like really hard, almost impossible. Uh, you need some sort of edge and wall to make some eyes with. A weak group or something. Otherwise, you're probably going to die. So something maybe instead like M, M, M14 or M13? Like here or here, yeah. yeah Somewhere yeah, on the line yeah. that you can connect back very easily. I think it would be more recommended. I gotcha. And there's a tiger's mouth, and they cut. You just, ha ha, you fool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, that kind of stuff. Uh, it's a lot easier to handle. But white defend it, and you jump back, which is very nice. Very nice. Uh, this would be a little bit better. Um, your hint here is tiger's mouth and touching fights are usually vital points. So mm -hmm. this is a tiger's mouth for white. So it kind of peeps and lets you connect back. And if he tries to cut, um, technically you can be cut, but white is also leaving behind a lot of forcing moves. So it gives you a lot of chances to do stuff later to break in more. So yeah. it's white probably will still try to cut, but it gives you a lot of forcing moves. If you don't like that, then you can maybe play a diagonal or something like this. I think I rem the reason why I played the way I did, and I think I remember at least seeing this concept in one of your uh, beginner series videos, I think where you were talking about like three, three invasion and mm -hmm. you were discussing like which direction to build. And it seemed like it was okay. Wherever you have more, more stones, you should be building uh, like facing that. So what I was yeah, thinking, that's for thickness, right? Yeah. For thickness, but you're not the one making thickness. I guess I assumed that like, since I have so many stones at the top, building i guess horizontally because i'm reinforcing my influence like with that rectangle is that is that incorrect so you mean this way yes well if you, that's fine but then you would play this one okay this is your idea mm -hmm. um i think this one's a little bit easier but let's assume your idea for a second what if you play some forcing moves? <laughs> and they do all that. Yeah, maybe you lose five stones, but remember, five stones aren't big. Hmm. And then you do that. Ta-da! There's your idea on a very big scale. Nice. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I mean, your idea is not wrong. It's the execution. Okay. If you want to play off the left side stones, then play off the one space or two space jump off the left side stones to cap. If you want to play off the top stones, cap. These are the easy ways to do it. Um, and as long as you're building a bowl, I think it's good. Some sort of bowl shape. Gotcha. Like either this way or that way. Some sort of bowl. That's how you build up influence. Okay. So this was nice, but you really need to block this because that's your kind of escape route and your connections and also your bowl mm -hmm. so blocking here was very important um so white defended so actually now if black just blocks or even like one point jumps or something black has a lead <laughs> this is very nice i thought black was ahead here and you walked in very nice protected your cut very nice here though you tried to jump but just keep blocking. Hmm. And look how many points you have. You just block, 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 block. Okay. Here. Block, block. Block, 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 block. <laughs> you should win the game. <laughs> okay. If you have more than just block, <laughs> you win the game. But these two mm -hmm. moves, they got. They didn't really get much value at all. No, right? they didn't. So now white walks in, and now you see that's where you lost your advantage. And now white, these stones don't have a connection this way or this way, so now they need to start jumping. Because now they're a weak group, you need to jump and run away. 
So just again to review for me, like uh, jumping is when you're trying to run away, and then the knight's move is when you're trying to attack. Yeah, those are good shapes, but those are just one of many. So keep that in mind. Okay. And there's always exceptions. Uh, like for example, you can run with the knight's move if it can't be cut. Okay. Like there's always exceptions and go. There's always situationals, but you have to like first learn the basics and then learn when those basics are defined. Yep. Like for example, here this would be a great nice move to run away with, because um, you I have can't connections. Really, yeah, that's a this is a ladder, and this one just Atari's to the edge, so it can't be cut. Gotcha. So it's a double knight's shape, like this. It sort of blocks white from going in further. That can't be cut. Okay. So it'd be a very nice shape. Uh, but one, uh, there is, like uh, I said, run with one-point jumps. There's also an exception to that. Running with a one-point jump when there's already a white stone pre-threatening the one-point jump is a very bad shape. Because now when white pushes, you immediately have two cutting points. Mm -hmm. Now, maybe this one's okay. But remember, three cutting points is a red flag. Two cutting points is almost there. So maybe something comes about. Okay. So this is very like this shape is very dangerous. Uh, it's better to just push like that and block, or maybe push and then I don't know. Like that's how I came up with the knight's move is the one point jumps not good enough here because of that white stone. Got it. So yes, the one point jump good for defense. Knight's move good for attack. But that's just one of many shapes, and there's exceptions. It was unfortunately hard. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, here you're already blocking him, so you don't need to keep responding. Now you guys are actually in endgame because there's no really open areas left. Oh wow! Uh, so the re the hint is everything on the board is now pushing borders. There's yeah, I no was. Weak groups. Sorry, I was gonna say I I was perpetually worried about um like some kind of extension for him with the like L10 M11. Uh, in in twelve oh twelve, like I I was worried that he was gonna try to like march in there. I mean, there's not a ton of space there, I guess, but it just felt like I needed a stone to sort of curtail things there. I think he eventually did kind of walk in a bit. Yeah. So here, I would say because this is already blocked, and this area, you can see how small of a circle it is. Usually, mm. you don't play such a small circle until the very end. And second line comes before that. Because second hmm. line, let's assume he takes the circle, like something in Gote, and you go here, this circle versus this circle is much bigger. Yep. Hmm. So that is why second line is usually comes before small centers, because it threatens a large circle. So you'd start seeing stuff like this. Um, so in endgame, would you say that yeah. you should be pushing towards the largest territory? Uh, yeah. You, you, in endgame, it's not it's not as about the largest territory as it is about forcing moves, threatening large territories for free. Okay. So it's all about pushing these large territories and sente. Sente is everything in endgame. Mm -hmm. Sente is everything in endgame. Like all these forcing moves, all these forcing moves, all these forcing moves. And then after you play all your forcing moves then you can come back and start blocking some small centers somewhere. I gotcha. Right? Okay. Um, but the 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 difficult part here is I don't think you guys will be able to recognize endgame at this stage at your level. Uh, so the hint is to train yourselves that when you realize that every move is just pushing borders, then you realize you're in endgame and you shift gears to instead of saying largest framework, I'm thinking... Sente, 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 and push mm -hmm. the borders everywhere in sente. So as soon as you can, as soon as you realize you're in endgame, shift gears. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then the last really big thing was that Atari that you got off. Mm -hmm. um, so right here, White's tried to go in, and you very nicely cut him off. It's a little bit dangerous because there is that Atari, but you're okay. Mm-hmm. Thankfully, you're okay. Yeah, he, this, about yeah. here, I felt pretty stupid. Like, like this was just wasting yeah, moves. Don't, <laughs> don't play vital points before you surround. Yeah. 
Don't play vital points before you surround. Uh, no, my stream crashed earlier, and I had to restart it summoning. Uh, so yeah, push the borders. This was good. This one was not, because this is a dame point. That's not a border. Hmm. This is just a neutral point. No one's getting territory threatened from that point. So avoid dame points. Yeah, I, you know, my, my thought process there was I wanted to connect those structures. Ah, if, uh, um, don't I thought it would be a cut groups. point. If groups are alive on both sides, connections are pointless. Okay. So if you have two eyes on the left and two eyes, you already have two eyes down here, and you definitely have two eyes over here, so connecting them is not important. Okay. Sure, that makes um, sense. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll hear... This is probably above your level, but you could have blocked. Hmm. Because uh, if you don't know that, then you should have blocked here. Thanks blocking for following the Dirk Birkeland. Uh, blocking the side is more important, and this is like easier shapes for you to use, I guess. But him pushing here and you letting him in, that's like 10 points right there. So remember, you made 20, point, 20 points right here. Give me the pin. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 20 there's a 20 point mistake right here but you also because you didn't block the borders like for example this move or this move that's 10 points and remember you that's already 30 and you lost by 44 all right let's find one more there's another one block here because this one's blocked already yeah and there's another 10. So there's the there's the game right there. Wow. Hmm. Uh, don't do this crap. You're too strong for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I That's... I think I I I just you know when when there's so much space there, I, I, like I guess when you say okay, you can definitely make two eyes. It's not immediately obvious to me, so I'm trying to like see if I can create something, but that's well... probably too ambitious. Yeah, the hint here is if you have to invade on the second line, you're probably gonna die. Okay. Because third, remember, I'm saying I stress the invasions are on third lines and stuff. S the second line is where you die. Second and first line is where you die. Those are usually played for stealing, or for threatening cuts or cuts or whatever, like some sort of squeeze tactics, cut tactics. They're not usually used for invading. Mm -hmm. um so when you're saying i'm invading here this should die because uh if we look if we ask ourselves do we have eyes third line no no eyes so can we escape no we're already surrounded is there cutting points not really so you should die instead it's better to maybe do this blo just block whatever mm -hmm. um and the only time second line stuff activates is when you get shapes like this where there's a cutting point yeah okay once he played in on b4 then e3 was starting to look like like i was worried that maybe playing e3 for him and threatening two cuts was going to be an issue yeah but i guess it never was um, uh so br could yes uh i am uh, i do agree it's not wrong to learn from trial and error but you're supposed to learn this on 9 by 9 and 13 by 13. that's why i said this is below the level i think he's at in my opinion I think you're uh, strong enough to see that this can die. And if you want to practice with this, that's perfectly fine. But I think you should do that on small boards, not big boards. Second line and first line invasion stuff, I think you should learn on the small boards rather before the big boards. Yeah. Um, with that being said, this is not how you kill it, White. <laughs> this, is how you, <laughs> this is how you help it live with uh, some, like maybe you make a mistake and like he lives or something right yeah like don't push him to the corner for eye space you're supposed to like surround him yeah take away space. i was i was like i was really worried about e3 and i felt like um like just getting some groups connected i mean i yes, guess they're already but connected but that, that was my thought process yeah. i i see that it's wrong but yeah you fixed it here though like you, yes e3 is a concern like if you ignore it mm -hmm. you have a cut right here and then an atari and then that yeah mm -hmm. that's a concern but you fixed it with the first move. Okay, so that's what I didn't. Move. That's what I didn't realize. Yeah. Yeah, you already fixed it. Okay. Uh, and here's the mistake of the game. This is a good. This yeah. is fine. This is Sente Atari, but for one, this is bigger. <laughs> uh, yeah. This is just two points. 
uh, you force them to fill, but you have to fix this cut now. Yeah. Your hint for seeing this is any group that has like three, four liberties, three liberties, or two liberties that are not connected to something, you really have to watch those cutting points. Cutting points are going to be the bane of your existence in Yose. As a double digit Q, cutting points are going to be awful for you in Yose. The way you look for these and see these is any stones that have like two or three liberties, check the cutting points. The, that's mm -hmm. your hint. That's your hint. Cutting points can destroy positions at the end of the game like this. Because if you don't see, because your eyes aren't adjusted to it yet, so it's very easy for you to miss it. So you have to train your eyes to see any liberties, any stones that are not directly connected might have liberty problems. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I totally was not looking there. I just assumed it was safe, so I just need to train yeah. my vision. Um, yeah, that's just about training uh, the, your ability to see, your ability to check cuts on the Liberty groups. But that really just comes with practice, unfortunately. There's no easy way to just know that. It's just mm -hmm. practice. Um, this one is better to Atari and Sente if you want to fix that not even a cut thing. Uh, and then go fix here. That's a couple points. Okay. Um, yeah. And yeah. So big th big takeaways from this game. Uh, one is cuts. And the second, I think, is the borders of the Moyo. Those are important. And the third is, if you're going to play behind enemy lines, try different invasion tactics. But my advice is to learn reductions first. Reductions first. OK. Uh, do you guys have any questions about that? Those are the main points. No, yeah, I think... That was a very fun game. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I thought that was very even. You guys played very well. And now you're... I think you're figuring out Night Gemini team um, very quickly, which I think is great. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm feeling so... more comfortable with it even just over the course of this stream. I feel better now than I did when it started. <laughs> so. We've also been winning. So. Yeah, that helps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, cash I mean, I would say I also feel better about it now than at the beginning, too. I mean, I think I've I think I learned um, these two reviews like just a lot, a lot, and it's going to improve.